It wasn't just schools that were trying to Americanize immigrants. Protestant social workers were a familiar presence in Italian enclaves, preaching the virtues of good hygiene and a proper American diet. There was a huge struggle around oatmeal. For breakfast, you're supposed to eat oatmeal, and that was the healthy breakfast. And Italians viewed oatmeal as pig food. Covello collected a story in the 1920s of an Italian father just exploding, saying, look at this, we come to America, we think we're going to make it here in America, and they're giving us the food of animals to eat. This is, this is pig food. This is animal food. What are they doing to us in America? They take you, you know, they remove the vowel from your name. They send you home with pig food to eat. What is this? No, 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 and no. They wanted Italians to open their windows because Italians tended to keep their windows shut tight because they were afraid of drafts on their babies. So these home visitors would come in and just throw the windows open, which was just, just a, 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 an outrage to Italians. They tried to get them to stop swaddling their babies. They wanted the baby's limbs to be open and free. So the very intimate levels of change that they were trying to affect. All of this was to stigmatize the practices of the immigrant groups, the food that they ate, cultural expression around holidays, was all ridiculed and to be replaced by really an Anglo-Saxon practices and culture. City agencies designed to deal with a rash of children orphaned by destitute immigrants aggressively pushed their own agenda to pump out newly minted Americans. My mother was born in Brooklyn on Rockaway Avenue. Her mother died when she was four. So my mother was then taken away to St. Joseph's Orphanage. And she lived there for six years, and she was forbidden to speak any Sicilian by Irish nuns. She was hit if she spoke Sicilian. And she had red hair. So eventually, she told her father, don't talk to me. When her father would come visit her, don't talk to me uh, in that language anymore. Really, they were caught in a loyalty conflict. If they assumed the, the values of the schools, they were going to be disloyal to their parents and their community. On the other hand, if they did not assume the values of the school, they were not going to be able to advance in an American way. When I was a kid, I would take my lunch to school, but my lunch was different from the other kids. They all had white bread ham sandwiches, and we didn't eat white bread at our house. It was always Italian bread. So the food already, you almost were embarrassed and wished you could devour what you ate covertly, if you could, wish you could sneak off somewhere and have your lunch by yourself. And so I always wished that I was more like these freckle-faced kids. They were the true Americans. People like me, the latecomers, it really made you feel very much conflict with who I was and who my parents were. And so you know the difficulty in becoming an American. It isn't a sudden process. You get over it, but you don't ever quite get over it. You carry it with you. And that's the great, not so great aspect of being or trying to be an assimilated American.